In a recent huge report from Paul Heyman, he states that Roman Reigns, the head of the table, the tribal chief, almost retired back in 2019-2020 during the COVID pandemic, as well as former WWE star calls out Tiffany Stratton and says some very hurtful things about her persona. And we're going to break it all down for you coming up on this episode of Wrestle Digest. But before we get into it, just want to say if you're a big wrestling fan, just like all of us here on the channel, and you're looking for your daily dose of wrestling content, wrestling news, and rumors, you're going to find it all here at Wrestle Digest. So make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button. But with that said, let's get right into the first topic of the video, which is Roman Reigns almost retired. And this is crazy to think that Roman Reigns almost retired back in 2019-2020. Uh, this is, uh, you know, they say here, ahead of his scheduled match at WrestleMania 36 against Goldberg, he considered himself retired. He wasn't coming back. Paul Heyman told Uprock Sports. And uh, as well, uh, we got another quote from Heyman here saying he was uh, the executive director of Raw and and Roman was assigned to SmackDown at that time. But every week, every week I heard all of the SmackDown writers and our person um, producers and personnel saying, God, I just wish Roman would come back. And I would ask, has anybody talked to him? They said, yeah, he says he's retired. He's not coming back. No way. Thanks a lot. Done. Finished. Goodbye. So the fact that he came back for this run for what we he we have accomplished is nothing short of a miracle because as far as he was concerned he was out as well uh, and obviously as everyone knows he returned back in at uh, SummerSlam 2020 uh, turning heel and attacking the fiend break Bray Wyatt I mean RIP to the GOAT Bray Wyatt he says who had just won the WWE Universal Championship after his return reigns aligned with Heyman a partnership that has been ongoing for three and a half years Wow, that's such a long time. He says a week after his return, Roman Reigns began his current reign as champion at the Payback Show, defeating Wyatt and Braun Strowman. Heyman, Heyman, in an interview, stated that Reigns' current run is nothing short of a miracle, as everyone backstage was convinced that he wouldn't return. And as well, they say here, without his return, we don't get the Tribal Chief, a title run right up there with the best of them, and very possibly one of the greatest long-term stories in professional wrestling. And I mean, Brady, this is some crazy news coming out today about the head of the table, Roman Roman Reigns saying that he didn't want to come back during COVID. And can you imagine what the WWE landscape would look like now without the tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns? I mean, you look at WWE these past three years, and the only face that comes to mind prominently for me is the tribal chief, Roman Reigns. I mean, the stories, who knows what the stories would have been? Uh, who knows where Jey Uso would have been? Or Jimmy would have been if Solo would have a whole different role. I mean, clearly he came up to the ranks and played the enforcer for Roman Reigns, always there to have his back, uh, pay-per-view after pay-per-view. Paul Heyman, we could have had a different Paul Heyman guy. Could have uh, brought somebody else's career up to a whole new level. And um, I mean, just overall, Sami Zayn as well. I mean, I think Sami Zayn, uh, honorary use, was probably the most over that guy has ever been. And given the Elimination Chamber match and the main event and all that, it was just it was fantastic stuff. And to imagine not having any of that, it's, it's pretty mind-blowing. Yeah, it's crazy to think, and even with Paul Heyman, I mean, I think you believe he's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. You may, you could even make yep. the case that without Roman Reigns, that doesn't happen because, I mean, this guy really brought the Roman Reigns character to a, a, another level, like he's done for so many superstars in the past. But with Roman Reigns, I mean, what is he? His reign is over thirteen hundred days as WWE Universal Champion right now, and it's just crazy to think that. Even during the pandemic and three and a half years ago, this all could not have happened if Paul Heyman didn't go to him and say, hey, we need to do something. I mean, you're such a star. And he really brought him out, uh, brought out Roman here. I mean, you know, without the shield, without all of this, I don't think he, he gets this opportunity. But now he gets this opportunity with Paul Heyman over this last three and a half years to prove how dominant of a WWE superstar he is. And to think that this 1,300-day Universal Championship run almost didn't happen it is a absurd in my mind yeah it's it's crazy i mean roman reigns 
face face that runs the place. He is the most dominant professional wrestler there is right now. I mean, tell me someone who he hasn't conquered other than The Rock. Try. Exactly. It's just it's just you such can't. a dominant star. Like and, and he was such a better heel than than he was a baby face too. Oh I my mean, god, like, unreal. Acknowledge me, the head of the table, you know, the tribal chief, and, and he really knew how to turn the crowd against him and against his faction, the bloodline. And like you said, without Roman Reigns, you gotta think about where Jay Uso is, where Jimmy Uso is. I mean, Jay has turned baby face and the crowd loves him. Yeet. And, I mean, Yee? without Roman Reigns, these characters don't get developed. The, the Usos may not be as dominant of a tag team champion as they were over these last three and a half years. You, like you said, you may never get, have gotten Solo Sokoa. We may never seen The Rock come back. I mean, it's crazy that the Bloodline ha has kind of taken over the WWE. And everybody from the Bloodline, from, you know, the Samoa heritage, may have never got over in the WWE. And may, maybe never got a, a second chance. Well, I mean, I think having The Rock back uh, speaks the most volume here. And heel rock of all that. I mean, when's the last time we've seen The Rock not smiling on uh, WWE TV? He came back uh, 2011. There was no heel shenanigans. And he's been back and forth ever since. But this is different. This is very special. Uh, dropped the F-bomb. Uh, made Cody bleed. I mean, he's... Yeah, bringing back, boss. bringing back the Attitude final Era boss. with them, which I love. I love the Attitude Era. I think it would be great uh, in this in this times WWE, and I think it's just I mean great to see it. What happened here with Roman uh, after he said he's coming out of retirement and doing all this because he really has shaped the the WWE or this era of WWE around the bloodline around himself. I mean, when you when it made 20, 20, 30 years time down the road, we all look back at this era of WWE. WWE, and the first name that's going to come to mind is Roman Reigns, the head of the table. Acknowledging as we speak, Casey. Acknowledging as we speak. Exactly. I mean, unreal. Unreal. It's crazy what, what he has done with the WWE during his time here. And, I mean, as much as I cheer against him every year at WrestleMania for him to lose the belt, you got to respect uh, Roman Reigns and what he has done. I mean, what he's overcome in his personal life as well uh, uh, to come back uh, and just be a dominant champion and perform, you know, every night or at every pay-per-view in some crazy matches. Uh, and it's just great to see that he did come back. He didn't retire. And like I said, he's probably the, one of the best heels we've seen in recent time. And it's just great to see uh, him have this opportunity coming back out of retirement. And we got to give a huge shout out to Paul Heyman here for making this all happen. Absolutely. I mean, without Paul Heyman going to Roman Reigns, who knows? Roman could have stayed retired and we could have never seen the the top heel of the company. I mean, before before the tribal chief, personally for me, Roman Reigns was always a miss the mark guy. His promos were always a little stocky. I mean, in the ring he was great, but he always felt forced. Uh, I don't know if you all ever felt like that throughout yeah, the years when I, I he was a baby face. I definitely think that Paul Heyman added some character to this guy that he really needed to become a dominant uh, a WWE Universal Champion as he has been. And like we reported on recently, like he said he'd rather have this long run than be a 14, 15-time Universal Champion. And I think we, we got to credit this run, obviously to the Roman Reigns, obviously to the Bloodline, but a lot of the credit goes to Paul Heyman, and that's why he's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Most deserving Hall of Fame induction this year, by far. I mean, he took Brock Lesnar, kind of the same thing. He, you know, Brock Lesnar always struggled with his promo work. He got with Paul Heyman, and he really, you know, became a great star in the WWE. And he did the exact Beast same incarnate. thing. Beast incarnate. He did the exact same thing with Roman Reigns. So, I mean, Paul Heyman is just so great at, at building people's character, making the fans hate him. Uh, I think this, you know, a lot of credit has to go to him for making this all happen. And obviously, shout out to the Tribal Chief. You know, he's got main event in two nights night of wrestlemania here uh called it up so i mean this is just great uh it's gonna be interesting to see if cody finishes the story and, and all this and it all it's all because of paul Heyman. exactly without paul Heyman, 
there would be no story to finish. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and you're not wrong there. And uh, I mean, it's just great to see this guy, like I said, overcome all the adversity that he's had in his life and, and come back uh, in, in these last three and a half years and just be a dominant champion, be a dominant face of the WWE. I'm really uh, excited for this WrestleMania because of all that's going on right now. But we're going to get into our second topic of the video here today, which is former WWE wrestler calls out Tiffany Stratton. And obviously, Tiffany Stratton has been on a, a tear since she's since she's came to the WWE from NXT. And we have Dana Brooke former uh, WWE uh, superstar, now on TNA Impact as Ash by Elegance. Uh, she goes out and, and replies to a fan on Twitter saying, Tiffany Stratton has a far better swanton bomb. bomb. Sorry, not sorry. And uh, Dana Brooke, Ash by El Elegance said, Funny thing is I've been doing it for years and she loves to steal everyone's moves and gimmicks. Knock off Barbie. I mean, this is a crazy statement by Dana Brooke to come out and say that Tiffany Stratton is stealing everybody's moves is a knockoff Barbie. I mean, I'm really big on Tiffany Stratton right now. I love her character. I love her moveset. Obviously, the gymnast background really makes her some impactful moves in the ring. And for her to come out and say that she's stealing everybody's move, stealing everybody's gimmick is kind of crazy in my eyes. I mean, these statements, they're crazy. Uh, stealing moves, a basic Barbie. I mean, was Dana Brooke not... Charlotte Flair's sidekick stealing her moves and being a basic Barbie uh, for for a number of years. I mean, come on, come on, Data Brooke. Good for the Heat, but you know, yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I have to agree with you. I mean, you see, like I wouldn't say she's stealing moves. Maybe she's taking them and incorpor incorporating her own swing on things, which we've seen multiple times. Obviously, the spear. Edge, Roman Reigns, Braun Breaker, they're not stealing each other's moves. They're just making it their own. And you you got to say, man, the prettiest moonsault ever, maybe the best name and the best finisher in the WWE right now. I really love it. No doubt. I mean, it's fantastic. Tiffany Stratton is fantastic. I love what, the, what they've been doing with her in NXT. I love the matches that she's been putting on. Uh, she's the right person for the job right now, I think. And, uh... For, for Dana Brooke to attack like that, I don't know. Yeah. Seems unnecessary. I mean, without, you know, completely uh, destroying Dana Brooke here, I think that she may be just jealous that Tiffany Stratton is getting this opportunity when she never got to get <laughs> that opportunity. But, I mean, Tiffany Stratton, she has it. She has, you know, that great character. It's Tiffy time. And I think she's the future of the women's division here in WWE. Obviously, her performance at the Elimination Chamber was phenomenal. Really put her on the map in WWE. And I think she's just going to take off from here. And people who have been there and didn't get their opportunity are just going to be hating on her because, I mean, she's done it in such a short amount of time. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, it's it's Tiffy time. That's that's absolutely correct. And when Dana was trying to capture the spotlight, it was Charlotte Flair time. So, I mean, I understand uh, where the bitterness comes from. But, again, unnecessary in my eyes. Yeah, and, I, and all the best to Dana Broke Ash by Elegance in TNA. Uh, I think it's just crazy that she's come out and, and said this statement about one of the bright start, bright futures of, of the women's division in Tiffany Stratton. And if I'm Tiffany, I'm not taking this to heart. I'm think I'm thinking that well, she's just jealous of the position I'm in right now, and I'm sure that's the way Tiffy is going to take it. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure down below hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're going to be here every day bringing you wrestling content rumors news reports everything that happens around the wrestling world you'll catch it right here daily on wrestle digest but like i said if you enjoyed it make sure down below hit that like button leave a comment while you're down there as well know what your thoughts are on this dana brooks statement because i mean that is just an unreal statement to come out and say let us know about what you think the landscape of wwe would look like without roman reigns let us know down below in the comment section but as always i've been your host casey alongside my co-host brady we'll catch you in the next one